Howdy, howdy, everyone. Chris here. Welcome to Garage Noise. And on this episode, we're going to repair this nasty rust hole on this Dodge door. Now, this door is part of a much bigger project where we're going to place the rockers on this Dodge 3500. That'll be in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. So the first thing you want to do when you're making a patch is you want to determine how much of that rusted metal you need to remove. So I've determined where I want this to be cut. So I've got a piece of metal here. This is non-galvanized 16 gauge steel. You could use 18 or whatever you choose. And what I'm going to do is lay it on the contour of that panel. And then I'm going to trace around it. And that'll give me the exact and precise measurements of where I want to cut this metal out. So this patch is going to have to wrap around to the inside portion of the door. So I've determined how much metal I need to wrap around that door and I'm marking it off here. And then we'll make a straight cut and a bend to wrap it around that door and weld it on the inside as well as the outside. You can see here where I've marked this about an inch or an inch and a half wider so we can wrap that metal around this door. Now that we have it all marked off, we're going to go ahead and cut the rusted metal out of this door. For that, I'm going to use this Astro Pneumatic cutoff wheel and we'll just trim the areas that we've marked and remove that rusted metal. Now that we have the rusted metal removed, we're going to check out the inside of the door. And as you can see, there's some surface rust and the edge of that door is rusted away. So I'm going to trim that edge up, cut out my patch panel, and then we'll do some metal preparation on the inside of that door. I'll do a quick test fit of the patch and then we'll grind away as much of this rust on the inside door as we can. We want to remove all that rust if possible. If you can't get down in the pits, you can use a sandblaster to sandblast that rust out and then hit it with a rust inhibitor like OSFO. Now I've prepared the door and the patch panel for welding by grinding it with a 36 grit Rolock disc. I'm fitting it up and I marked it with a piece of tape to show me where to bend it. So as you can see, we folded it over on that tape line and that'll give us an idea of where that edge is. After I get this patch panel welded in, we'll refine that edge by using a dolly and hammer to flatten it out. We are going to butt weld this, so we want this patch to fit as tight as possible. You don't want to have any big gaps that will make it more difficult to weld. So I'm fitting this patch up there, and if it doesn't fit quite like I want to, I'll grind a little bit on one edge or the other to get this to fit as perfect as possible. Now I've got this patch fitting the way I want it, so I'm going to go ahead and treat the inside of this door. This is some weld-through primer that we're going to spray all inside the door and on the outside of the door and then on the patch piece itself. This is where you would want to use a rust inhibitor to spray inside the door. If you choose, you could use a cavity wax or some kind of rust inhibitor like OSFO or something of that nature. This patch is a pretty tight fit, so I've slid it over the edge of the door and we'll tap it into place, get everything lined up so there's no big gaps, make sure it's nice and level, and then we'll tack it in with the MIG welder. We'll tack it in a few spots to hold it, and then we'll go through and we'll tack every about half an inch around the whole patch, and then we'll go through and fill in those areas with welds. The reason we don't want to do one solid weld on this patch is because that will heat up the metal and cause it to warp, cause a problem with our body filler and getting this panel straight. So what we'll do is weld every half an inch and then go in and fill in those welds with other welds until it's completely welded and ready for filler. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a screwdriver, I'm pushing down on the patch panel to level that metal with the door before I start tack welding it. Now that we have this basically tacked in solid, we're going to go ahead and grind those welds down and then we'll go in and fill in in between those welds until it's one solid weld. Here I'm just taking a hammer and dolly and we're going to straighten up that door edge, flatten it out so it lays flat against the back side of this door. We are going to use filler on this so even if we put a little dents in the edge of this door, it's going to be straightened out with some filler. We want that to fold over nicely and look as factory as possible.
Here I am going through and filling in the welds. We want it to be one solid weld. We want to make sure it doesn't heat up as we're welding. So you can use some air to blow it off and keep it cool if you think it's getting too hot. But you want to spread out those welds so you don't heat up and warp that metal. Now we'll just grind down these welds till they're flush. I'm going to fill in some of these other areas that I might have missed. And then we'll be almost ready for some filler. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip this door over and then we'll prepare this for welding. You can see where I've folded that metal over and it meets up nicely with the inside of this door. So we're going to grind all the paint off. We're going to treat it with some weld through primer. And now I'm using the screwdriver again. We're going to line this metal up and tack weld it just like we did on the front side of this door. Now I'm going to run over these welds with the belt sander and some 36 grit sandpaper. We'll smooth those all out. We'll go through, finish up the welding on the back side of this, and then we'll mix up some fiberglass filler to put on these welds. Now we're going to mix up some fiberglass filler, and this is the filler I'm using today, the U-Pole Fantastic Glass. Really easy to sand, good product, and if it's something you're interested in, or if you're interested in any of the tools or products I use today, I will leave links in the description. So this mixes up just like regular filler. It's about 2% hardener and the rest filler, so you mix it up. You want to fold it in so you don't create any air pockets. And basically, we want to use this to cover those welds. This is going to be perfect for covering those welds. We're not trying to straighten the panel with this, but we just want to get those all those cracks and crevices filled with fiberglass before we lay in a coat of filler. After about 15 to 30 minutes, this fiberglass filler will be cured and ready to be sanded. You could go ahead and sand it out. I would recommend 80 grit sandpaper with a small block. Get it nice and smooth and ready for another coat of filler. Now, I did not need a bunch of filler on this. It was pretty straight after the fiberglass. So I went ahead and used icing. It's a polyester glazing putty. I put a thin coat on the inside of this door and then on the outside as well. So now I'm just blocking out the inside of this door. We're getting it ready for primer and then we'll flip it over and start blocking the outside. Now I'll go ahead and put a guide coat on this so I can show you how to block this. But what I'm using is a small firm block. This is a hook and loop block with some 220 grit sandpaper. The icing sands really well with 220 grit. It's not real aggressive and it'll be good for covering with primer. So we'll block this in a crosshatch pattern or an X pattern, and that'll help get it straight as possible. This Duragold guide coat is going to show us any higher or low areas, so we'll just spread it on here, and then we'll block it in an X or crosshatch pattern, and that'll show us any low areas we have or any high areas, and then we can address those with some more filler. So as I block over this repair, you can see where the guide coat is exposing some low areas that we need to fill. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more icing and we're going to lay another coat in the low areas and then we'll put it over top the entire repair and then we'll block it out once again and it should be ready for some primer. If you're finding this video helpful and want to support the channel, check out my links down in the description or you could just like this video and leave a comment down below. The only thing we have left is to block this body filler out. We're going to use some 220 grit sandpaper on a firm block, and we're going to block it in an X pattern. Then we'll go over it with an orbital sander with some 320 grit sandpaper to smooth it out, and we'll be ready for some primer. To learn more about paint body repair, click on one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.